So today we're going to be doing something that I think is actually a first for the channel. We're going to be taking a look at a web browser. And this is the Firefox based LibreWolf. And we're going to be taking a look at it right now on the Linux Lounge. So indeed today we're going to be taking a look at LibreWolf. Now without a doubt throughout this review I'm going to probably be accidentally referring to it as LibreFox, but it is indeed LibreWolf. And as you can see here, we have their website and they sort of describe it as a fork of Firefox focused on privacy, security, and freedom. And indeed, it is in fact a fork of Firefox. And as you can see, it looks very much like Firefox. Here is Firefox for comparison. You can see that there are a few differences. So for instance, the theming here is a little bit different, like the window icons are in line with the tabs, which I really like, really makes it feel integrated with the system. There's a few more buttons in different places by default. As you can see, you've got a shortcut to the preferences and add-ons right on the taskbar. But as a whole, it's pretty much just Firefox. Like they take Firefox and they make it even better, which fantastic. And um, this browser is very much for, well, as they say here, it's focused on privacy, security, and freedom. So it's very much for people who want those things. And you can sort of see from their main features, you can see exactly why it's targeted towards those people. The first thing they sort of advertise themselves as having is no telemetry, so no experiments, adware, annoyances, or necessary distractions. So they remove a few of the more unnecessary features of Firefox, they remove the sort of calling home to Mozilla, and they remove a few other odds and ends that annoy people as well. In fact, I can actually go ahead and demonstrate this, so if we go into privacy and security, scroll down, and you can see under LibreWolf data collection and usage, everything is turned off by default, and you can't turn it on which fantastic essentially this browser will send no data to anyone great um, you get private searches so the search providers by default are a little bit different from what you would get in Firefox so by default in Firefox the default search engine is Google which is a little bit questionable but I guess it does make sense here in LibreFox the default search engine is DuckDuckGo and you have options to use Wikipedia, DuckDuckGo Lite, Cirques which I do have a separate view on that, it's a fantastic search engine. Start page, Jive, Quan, Metagur, I've never actually heard of that, and Invidious, which is a YouTube front end, which is fantastic as well. So the default search engine and LibreFox are really nice, and if you're sort of someone who's concerned about your uh, privacy and stuff, well you should probably use one of those, and you get a good selection out of the box too. Another thing that LibreFox has is a built-in ad blocker, you get uBlock Origin by default which is a absolutely fantastic ad blocker. Now I know that people are divided on like whether or not you should use an ad blocker, but if you need your privacy and security for whatever reason, you probably also need an ad blocker. You also get enhanced security, so you know you get an extension firewall and some other things. So essentially they've sort of, well as they say here, they've added all sorts of security tweaks and it doesn't sacrifice usability, which I can confirm it doesn't sacrifice usability. This is a fantastic browser. It's still every bit as fast and usable as Firefox. You get fast updates, which um, it's not like a huge modification of Firefox. So it's very easy to bring in, like sort of in line with mainline Firefox. And yeah, indeed, this is always kept up to date and it's completely open source. So, you know, whatever you want to do with LibreWolf, you can do that. Now, that's all the sort of main features. There's a few other odds and ends, but as a whole, it really is just Firefox. Now, this browser reminds me a lot of ungoogled Chromium, which ungoogled Chromium being literally just Chromium with all the Google stuff stripped out. Whereas LibreWolf is actually a little bit more than that. It does have its own features and stuff, but as a whole, it's kind of Firefox without the Mozilla, which is, you know, for the privacy conscious, quite a good thing. Now let's say you want to get this browser, how do you do it? Well, if we go into the downloads, you can see they have builds for Gen 2, Mac OS, you know, common files, they have Windows build, or well, they will have Windows build, they have builds for Arch Linux, and they have sort of generic Linux build. Which I've got to say, it's very interesting that they would consider sort of Windows a bit of a, not exactly a second class citizen, but it's quite interesting that they would support Linux and Mac OS first. But I guess it does make sense because, well, you know, the sort of people who are going to be using a browser like this probably also use Linux or Mac OS. So the easiest way to get this, I'm probably going to say, is if you're using Arch or Manjaro, get it from the AUR. I think it is in there. Failing that, you can get it from here. They have a binary build. 
But if not, you can get it as an app image, which is what I'm using, or you can get it as a flat pack. Now, the thing about getting it as a flat pack, I will say, I've heard people who've had success with it, but I've also had, you know, heard that apparently it's, you know, completely not worked for some people and totally messed up their um, flat pack. So just be aware of that, but I would assume it would work fine. Um, the one thing I would say about using an app image is be a little bit careful about that because I'm not sure about how the app images handle updates. That's something to be aware of, but like I say, probably get it from the AUR if you can. So I've got to say, there's not really a lot to say about this browser. It really is just Firefox, but even better, and it really is quite a bit better than Firefox. So what I'm going to say is this. If you use Firefox and you're interested in, you know, your security, privacy, freedom, that sort of thing, I would probably switch to this because you don't really lose a lot. I think one of the only things that you lose really is you lose the Firefox sync. But other than that, everything works. You know, you can browse the web as normal. Oh, another thing that this is missing is you can't play DRM content, I believe, which makes sense. Libra Wolf, you know, um, Libra Software, you probably don't want DRM stuff anyway, but that's something to be aware of. But like I say, everything works. You can browse the web as normal. You can install add-ons from the Mozilla store. As you can see, continue installation, it will work. Um, the only thing to be aware of with that is some people who have tried this browser have had issues updating add-ons apparently. So that's something to be aware of. But all in all, it seems to work fine. So my verdict is this. This is a fantastic browser and if you're sort of more privacy conscious, definitely give it a look. It's a fantastic piece of software and I really hope that there are more Firefox forks that come out in the future because I've noticed that recently it's been all about sort of Chromium forks. So I kind of hope that the Firefox web engine and the Firefox browser get some more love in that department. But with that said, I think that's it for today's video. Definitely try this web browser out and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.